Hello everybody and welcome back to the Not Applicable Formula 1 channel. This weekend saw round 6 of the 2023 season in Monaco and what a weekend it was. I'm going to go slightly against the grain here and say that Monaco was really exciting. It was a really fun Grand Prix. You guys even rated it a 4 star race which for Monaco is amazing. A sprinkling of rain towards the end really did help mix up the whole afternoon and completely change my driver ratings too. So let's get into it. Here are my post race driver ratings for the Monaco Grand Prix from best to worst. Top of my rankings this weekend, it has to be Esteban Ocon. If we'd have seen a red flag at the end of Q3, which is quite commonplace in Monaco, he may have even started the race on pole position. But P3 is a phenomenal result. And then to be able to hold on to it after being under pressure from Carlos Sainz, the rain then coming, being under pressure from Lewis Hamilton, a podium finish in an Alpine car was not expected this year. So take a bow, Esteban. Verstappen should have probably been number one on this list, I'm not going to lie to you, but he's used to winning Grand Prix at this point, and he once again made a quite complicated weekend look pretty comfortable. Putting together the final sector under pressure on that last lap in Q3 might be the best racing we have ever seen from Max. Pinpoint precision on the Saturday led to him controlling the race on the Sunday and extending his lead in the championship too. It's looking pretty ominous. Fernando Alonso spoke all week about how this was his best chance to win in an Aston Martin car, and he was definitely the closest to Max Verstappen coming home in second place. He gave it everything he had, but missed out on that pole position by the tiniest of margins. Then in the race, strangely stopped just before the rain came down for slicks, so had to pit again for inters. Had he gone onto the inters straight away, maybe he would have been within striking distance of Verstappen? Lewis Hamilton was incredibly positive for what feels like the first time this season, and it showed on race day as he was able to carry that new look Mercedes to a fourth place finish. Qualifying was still the weakest part of the weekend, but that's been the case all season for Mercedes, to be honest with you. And then in the race, he benefited from just keeping it clean as he did temporarily fall behind George Russell, but took that place back by staying on the road, even though he was struggling with tyre temperatures on the intermediates. I think many will say that I've placed Leclerc too high on this list, but I think if you look at the overall weekend, he got as much pace out of that car as possible. Like the communication lapse between him and the team, which led to that three place penalty was incredibly annoying considering he was just one tenth off pole position. He then lost out to George Russell, but gained on his teammate. So made the best of a bad Ferrari car. Oscar Piastri, again, is on just a completely different level to the other rookies on the grid. His first time around Monaco in Formula 1, his first points finish in Monaco too. He put real pressure on Lando Norris this weekend in terms of his pace in qualifying. He was just behind his teammate and then followed him closely throughout the entire Grand Prix as well. We really might have a special talent on our hands here at McLaren. Yuki Tsunoda may have finished in 15th place, but he deserved so much more. He looked set to finally finish above 10th for 11th with a 9th place in qualifying on the Saturday. The Alpha Tauri does suit these kind of tracks, to be fair, but I, I still think he got the best out of that car. Then in the race, 9th place was firmly in his sights, but then... When it rains, it pours on Yuki, and braking problems saw him struggle on the intermediate tyres and fall backwards outside of the points. Lando Norris did make a mistake in Q2 as he hit the wall twice, although he'd already done enough to get through into Q3. The team then did an amazing job to get the car prepared and back together again, but he couldn't actually improve on P10, which left him a little bit frustrated on the Saturday. Come race day, he didn't do anything wrong, but lost out in the rain, stopping just before the downpour for the hards, and then again for intermediates. So he put together a solid shift but I think we'll be disappointed that both of the Alpines outdid him considerably. Talking of Alpine, Pierre Gasly had a solid weekend that on any other weekend would have been great but his teammate got a podium and he was almost four tenths off Ocon in qualifying after struggling with the rear end so it was a bit up and down. Then he got frustrated with the team on Sunday as they pitted him earlier than he would have liked as if he had stayed out then he would have been in the same situation as George Russell and it might have been him taking the trophy home for Alpine instead of Esteban. Valtteri Bottas managed to quietly finish just outside the points positions in Monaco. Like, I don't actually think we saw him on the coverage at all, but he went super long on the hards from the start and then was able to make the most of only having to stop once for intermediate tyres. If he hadn't have been stuck in traffic during qualifying, maybe, just maybe, we'd have seen the fin in the points. Very impressive. Considering Alex Albon crashed in FP1, meaning the team had to use a 2022 spec front wing up until qualifying and tweak the car all the way up until qualifying as well, the fact he managed to qualify in 13th place was very impressive. Starting on the mediums, though, seemed to be his downfall as he had to come in quite early for hard compound tyres and then again for inters. It wasn't really his fault, but 
I feel like there was more in the tank for Albon this weekend. Joe's impressive start to the year definitely continued in Monaco. He was disappointed to get out in Q1, especially considering his teammate made it through. And then come the Sunday, there isn't too much you can do from 19th place. So he went for the bold strategy of pitting on lap one, similar to Sergio Perez, and went straight onto those hard tyres, hoping to get the benefit when everybody else stopped. And it worked really well moving him up into 13th place, but he still felt a little way off his teammate's pace. I know that George Russell came away from the weekend with a fifth place finish just behind his teammate, but it wasn't the smoothest weekend you'll see from the Mercedes man. He said himself that he messed up his qualifying on the Saturday by being a little bit too aggressive, but a podium was possibly on the cards because of his strategy on the Sunday. That was until he locked up in the rain and followed Stroll off the track, losing two places, rejoining unsafely. Like, a couple of mistakes cost George Russell a big opportunity this weekend. Do you remember when Carlos Sainz was like an incredibly safe pair of hands in Formula 1 and really consistent, and then he moved to Ferrari and it's all just collapsed? After Leclerc dropped backwards he started in fourth place but completely lost his head behind Esteban Ocon he was clearly frustrated and went for a gap that didn't exist breaking his front wing and then he was furious with Ferrari after they brought him in the lap after Ocon in a failed overcut attempt but they also had to defend from Hamilton and I think that's what they were going for although when the rain came he stayed out spun hit the wall and fell to eighth anyway I feel quite harsh putting Nick DeVries down here. He had a clean weekend on probably the trickiest track on the calendar as a rookie, and that deserves praise, but does it really, considering how much slower he was than his teammates still? Like, maybe this gives him the confidence to kick on this year. Otherwise, I feel like he's going to be left behind Yuki Tsunoda by quite a long way. Kevin might feel a little bit lucky to be this high up on the list considering he didn't actually finish the Grand Prix, but I think he extracted as much pace as he could from that Haas car that really didn't seem to find its groove in Monaco this weekend. However, I don't actually know if it was him or the team that made the call to stay out on slicks when the rain came because a collision with the wall was definitely not what he needed. We saw a little bit of that aggressive driving style that was hinted at before the Miami Grand Prix in Monaco from Nico Hülkenberg. He went all in at the start. He tried to make up like five places in one turn but instead smacked into Logan Sargent getting a five second penalty for good measure and had to pit on the first lap for hard tyres then that five second penalty turned into a 10 second penalty just to round out a horrible afternoon for the German. Logan Sargent, what can we say? The only excuse that we can throw in is that he is a rookie and Monaco is a horrible circuit to try and master, even for the most experienced drivers on the grid. He didn't make any particularly disastrous mistakes as such, but he was just slow. He struggled with tyre deg and became basically a moving cone for the rest of the field to overtake and lap. I still have hope that he will eventually click with this year's Williams car, but this weekend was not the one. Sergio Perez effectively sealed his fate on Saturday when he crashed out of Q1 by going way too hot into turn one even he couldn't believe what he'd done especially considering you know he's known as this street circuit expert and of course won here in Monaco last year I suppose at least he gave it a go he went for an incredibly bold strategy and tried to put in some moves but instead collided with Stroll and Magnussen and then P16 five pit stops lapped by your teammate twice that's pretty tragic. And the worst driver on the grid, in my opinion, in Monaco was Lance Stroll. His season has just slowly drifted from being pretty good in Bahrain and Australia to okay in Baku to then just awful in Monaco. He collided with so many other drivers around the tight bends of Monaco before ending it with two collisions with the wall at the hairpin with, what, 25 laps left to go? He has been handed an amazing opportunity this season to prove the doubters wrong, and he just isn't and then the talk after this weekend is again about whether he deserves that seat or whether he's just there because his dad owns the team it's not a good look Finally, my favourite moment of the weekend was that final sector from Max Verstappen in qualifying. I can't see how it could be anything else. Like, that is motorsport for me. Man, machine, millimetres from absolute disaster, but dancing through the corners, kissing the walls, and extracting every single second to grab that pole position. If you join the live stream on Saturday, you'll know just how blown away I was by it. But I'd love to know your favourite moment in the comments down below as well. And whilst you're down there, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll see you next time. Oh.